Hey guys, what is up? Nick the Nutter Buster. It's 55 degrees. Uh, October 30th. I don't know, Saturday before Halloween. And it is 423. We got two hours before the sun comes up. We are here at the boat ramp. We done drove two hours up the road to be the first people here at the boat ramp. And we're going to go hunt. And I haven't done a video in a while. I figured this may be a fun one because I think I got really good odds of killing a deer. The temperature has dropped pretty hard past couple of days and this is a good spot i got really good access to it really really good water access and then like a 10 yard walk up a bank um wind will be blowing my scent back across the lake i'll be up in kind of a, the edge of a bedding area with food to the south of me bedding to the north and to the west and then water to the east so i feel good about it i've seen probably 20 deer in the past two hours riding up the road three of them was nice bucks a uh, little spike. I seen two pigs right here at the boat ramp uh, coming up on it. I uh, actually seen a good size hog and, uh, and a little doe run out. So we've had a good season so far. Shot a, uh, let me think, first weekend of the season. Uh, got sick. Didn't hunt but one day, but got on some really good sign up in North Alabama. Uh, probably could have pulled a deer off of it if we hadn't got sick. Had to leave. Second weekend, uh, went to Mississippi and shot a uh, uh, coyote which was pretty cool stalked up on a sleeping coyote and then uh, let me see weekend after that i come up here to this spot and shot a little little five point hauled him out in the canoe uh seen a pile of deer i mean was passing on does just constantly and uh then last weekend i rode out to a spot up in north mississippi and same thing seen a pile of deer passed on a lot of does uh seen a couple of bucks nothing nothing really shooter uh, but we've had a had a good season so far. I think today, I think if I can find a little doe, I'm gonna take her out. And uh, if I find a big old, you know, ten point buck with eleven inch tines, we're gonna take him out too. So we're gonna paddle up in here, and we're gonna set up in the saddle about twelve foot off the ground, right there with that the water behind us, so can't nothing sneak up on us. And we're just gonna sit there and watch, uh, kind of a little group of row pines they kind of run the edge of them real young row pines sometime in between the pines and the water and give you a little you know 15 yard pot shots so uh, it would not surprise me if by eight o'clock this morning we had blood on the arrow so that's why i'm filming this i feel real good about this spot um almost every time i hunt it i see deer and uh I, about 75 percent of the time i'd say I, I kill deer off this spot so we're gonna see what we can do stay with us Doe down. <laughs> I need to get a uh, tactic ham or something. Alright, so let's see if I can show you the setup. Uh, basically, she snuck up behind me. It's right here about 7 o'clock. Just barely getting good and light. And uh, squirrels are moving. And I kept hearing something that sounded, you know, less like a squirrel and more like a deer. But it was coming behind me and to my right. Right there off my 5 o'clock. And uh, I was trying not to look too much. But every now and then I'd turn my head, turn my head. Well, finally I turned my head. And uh, about 20 yards out, she's uh, she was standing there looking at my canoe. <laughs> and she was looking cock her head and she couldn't figure it out she'd stomp a little bit and it wasn't bothering her but i guess she knew that canoe wasn't there last night and uh she finally she turned broadside and started to calm down i guess you know since the canoe wasn't going to move or anything so uh i shot her and uh, i got a bead on her got a compass bearing and she didn't run far at all tempted to sit here for a few hours probably will sit here before i go pick her up just in case a buck comes out because she didn't she didn't make a lot of noise that was a very quick ordeal i saw her pile up i'm pretty sure it was a good shot i heard it hit her uh heard it hit her uh shoulder blade well i think i hit her up in the kind of the scapula so she was running with her chest low to the ground so should should have been a slam dunk shot 
but uh show you the setup so you can see that's the body of water I come in at and my canoe is like right there and she was right over there through that little pocket by that palmetto and uh, I shot her I had to kind of scooch down and shot her when she was right there and you can see this is my tree I'm in just got four mini sticks with a uh, scout platform sitting here in this transformer that's how I usually hang my bow it's my pack and uh, as you'll see my bows on my left hand side I had to come up and over the bridge and uh, actually shot that deer with my left hand holding the butt stock and my right hand up here Usually, you know, your right hand would be here, your left hand would be here, but I had it flipped around and shot her that way. Uh, you know, shot her right-handed, basically real easy to do with that, uh, that red dot, you can see, makes it easy. So, may have a hog down. So, turns out I set up with the feed tree behind me. All right. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, found the doe. She didn't go 20 yards. I knew I had her. The hog, I found the arrow and found some good blood. And I followed it for about 160 yards per the GPS. And uh, it was slowly petering out. And uh, I got up to some thick stuff. And right on the inside of that thick stuff, I found where he bedded. And there wasn't much blood at all. I mean, not half a shot glass full of blood. And uh, the bed was empty. And there was no blood leaving. So I think I hit him low. Where he planned the shot in my mind. And looking at my arrow. I think I clipped him low. Uh, I'm, I'm cool with that. It just means I don't have to clean a hog. But uh, I'll show you my setup. So this is the slough I come in. This is my boat with blood and a deer in it. All right, that's my two arrows right there. All right, and coming in through here, I exaggerated a little bit. It's more than 10 steps, but it is about one, two, three, four, five. So it's still less than 20 yards. You can see my pack up in the tree. I usually walk up through this little thing right here, this little ditch. So you're hidden until you pop up right there at the base of that tree. All right. So this is the third deer I've killed here. And that's the only one that come from behind. Third deer I've killed out this tree. So I'll show you. You ain't very high. You got a stick, my jacket on it. Two, three, four. And that's all my stuff up in the tree. First deer I ever killed here come this way through this open stuff. Second deer come this way at that thick stuff. Both of them hunted on the north wind. Had deer coming out of that thick stuff off in the distance to get these more open oak woods to the south. All right. And uh, I've had some deer cross through up in here. But what happened here I'll show you guys what a feed tree looks like. Not a super obvious one. Matter of fact, there's a good chance I'd have walked by it. I found this tree after the fact. All right, that white oak right there. All right, let's take a look at the leaf litter over here. All right, you can see pretty steady leaf litter. A lot of vegetation. There's not a lot of dirt. Alright. As you get, we're fixing to walk into the crown of this tree. All of a sudden, you start seeing more dirt. Alright. Dirt. I don't know if you can see it. The closer we get, and it'll be uneven. A lot of times where you see lots of dirt, like here, 
you look up and you'll be right under a big limb of that tree. So this is where the doe was standing when I shot her by this palmetto. All right, actually right here between these two palmettos. You can see lots of bare dirt, not a lot of fresh leaves on the ground. Matter of fact, there's some deer blood. All right, you can see my pack right there. All right, now all up under here, as long as you're in the drip line, you'll see there's a lot of bare dirt. All right, and I don't see any sign. There's some hog greetings. Matter of fact, he made them this morning. I don't see any scat. So this feed tree may be tapering out or just coming on. There's a bunch of tracks, hog and deer, down here in this mud. All right. You can see it's all pockmarked. It's all tracks. And then you'll see too, kind of hard to tell, but on these steep little inclines coming in and up out of here, you can see hoof prints. There's some over here. There's some of them where at? Up over there. And there's some up on the other side of this little hump. Coming in everywhere where they cross here, you can see tracks. All right, and part of that traffic is just animals coming through. That doe, I don't know where she come from. I think she come up here on high and come down. That hog... I heard him splash through here. So he cut through. Hogs are a little more four-wheel drive. They'll get up and over. You wouldn't think it with their little little bitty legs. But they'll go up these steep banks a lot easier. Hogs, they, they just, they're in four low all the time. But anyway, this is a white oak. And you don't even see a lot of acorns on the ground. I'll say this. You hear people talk about there'll be a notch in the cap. I don't see no notches. None of these acorn holes have notches. <clears throat> There's acorns on the ground. Not very many. All right. Look at that. There's another cap. Another cap. No notches. I do not subscribe to the theory that says if deer are eating, they leave notches. And I don't, you don't see a lot of acorns. And this ain't super obvious, but it's a feed tree with real thick bedding on two sides, water on a third side. And really, if you follow this oak grove all the way south, you hit a road and get on the other side of the road, you got thick stuff too. So really, it's surrounded by either water or thick cover. So... That's what it looks like. That's what the very best feed tree looks like underneath it right there.